Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Nothing is more important to our nation than supporting our communities most vulnerable and helping them achieve the highest standard of living possible. This bill strengthens the integrity of the NDIS system by providing additional powers to the Commissioner to ban providers who are unsuitable to work due to misconduct. We require the highest standards when it comes to organisations and people involved in delivering the NDIS. Why others in this House do not support us on that is really a question for them. Because there is no room for shortcuts. There is no place for second best. It is important that the system and people tasked with looking after the interests of vulnerable people are given the resources to do their job. As a government, the safety and wellbeing of Australians is paramount. Expanding the powers of the Commissioner to ban those who are unsuitable could not be more important. How are we to empower Australians if we cannot guarantee their wellbeing? As the legislation currently stands, the Commissioner does not have, let me repeat that, does not have the authority to ban non-NDIS providers from entering the scheme. This means, for example, that an organisation guilty of misconduct can close its NDIS arm of the business to avoid sanctions. Gaming the system is simply not on, especially when it comes to the disabled, the elderly or, Deputy Speaker, children. As a government, I would say as a nation, we have a special responsibility to the less fortunate, a duty of care and responsibility that will be enshrined by this bill passing this House. Having worked in aged care, I understand the importance of putting in the right kind of protections to help those who help others. This legislation will make a big difference by proactively stopping unscrupulous actors from undermining our system and putting other people's lives at risk. Taking a strong stand on this issue could not be more important. Given the current provisions are too narrow, this legislation in effect closes a potential loophole and undermines vested interests which are seeking to exploit the system as it stands currently. Preemptively banning someone from providing services to the NDIS may feel harsh, and indeed, in most circumstances it is, but in these circumstances it is not. The reality is, if someone has been identified as unsuitable to work with persons in fields such as aged care or childcare due to their past actions, they should not be allowed to do so under the NDIS. Far from picking people out for exclusion, this Act is about keeping consistency and justice at the core of our system designed to protect people. It is all too frequent that bureaucracy gets in the way of people. It disempowers them. We see it with start-ups looking to innovate, innovate. We see it with small businesses trying to pay tax. And now we are seeing it with our most vulnerable members of our society. It is tragic that at a time when Australians are doing it tough, there are still vested interests that are calling for more regulation, higher taxes, all the while ignoring the fact that this puts real Australians' lives at real risk. This bill takes a stand against the exclusive clubs that game the systems while Austra that Australians rely on. As part of our smarter regulation agenda, it is not about more or less regulation, but better regulation, fairer regulation, simpler regulation, regulation that makes people's lives better, not worse, that empowers individuals to make decisions that they can then use to make their lives better. It is not about higher taxes, but simpler taxes, fairer taxes, that help small businesses run by mums and dads. Smarter regulation is empowering those with disabilities to pursue their own goals, to live a fulfilling life and providing that base level of protection and assurance. This has been the foundation of Australia's prosperity, which has been slowly chipped away at with the passing of new and more regulation and higher and higher taxes. 
Yet as we look towards our post-COVID-19 recovery plan, we will be relying now more than ever on streamlined regulation which no one, where no one is left behind. This especially includes those with a disability, the elderly and children. The proposed measure will expand the NDIS Commissioner's powers to allow a banning order to be made in relation to a person who was but is no longer employed by an NDIS provider. The current legislation requires that individuals to be employed at the time for the banning order to apply. This means that those who are guilty of gross misconduct could be working in a similar or indeed the same field as long as it is not with the NDIS or an NDIS provider. This may very well be putting Australians in danger. It is something that we need to stop and, and stop now. There is a time for decisive action. There is a time in the defence of the vulnerable and those who may not have a strong voice. The NDIS provider register includes a list of those who are banned. Ensuring that list is comprehensive is an important part of the first line of defence for NDIS participants and their representatives to ensure that any provider or worker they may engage are not currently subject to a banning order. This means having a commissioner who is empowered to protect those benefiting from the NDIS. An important part of that process is being able to issue a banning order to organisations who are either employed by the NDIS or have left the sector. Currently, if an employee leaves the sector due to an issue which may result in a banning consideration, they may be able to avoid that ban. This bill strengthens the system that we rely on to help protect our loved ones. The NDIS provider register holds information about the identity of providers and workers who had a banning order made against them by the NDIS commissioner and included enough information to identify them. The register is publicly available to allow persons with a disability, their representatives and providers to ensure the people they are engaging to deliver NDIS services are not subject to banning orders. This database is an important part of maintaining the integrity of NDIS and protecting people. Australians should have complete certainty that the professionals who are entrusted into their care are correctly trained, have a good track record of delivering their services and are not a risk. This bill gives the Commissioner additional powers such that he can support positive outcomes for those in our nation who most need them. COVID-19 has meant we are all focused on the safety and security of those who are most susceptible to the pandemic. Often this has significant overlap with those who are currently disabled and using the NDIS. All it takes is a single person's misconduct for COVID-19 to cause mass disruption and harm. Whilst this bill is not specifically related to the pandemic, the reality is by being able to preemptively ban people who have a history of misconduct, we are securing ourselves from the careless mistakes that cost lives. This is more crucial now than at any time in living memory. Providing additional measures of support and care is time sensitive. That is why even with the disruption that the pandemic has caused, we are prioritising this bill. It is a reflection of this government's ongoing commitment to retirees, to children, to the vulnerable and, frankly, to all Australians. That is part of what it means to have a fair go. Hardworking Australians deserve systems which protect their loved ones and provide the best possible care. This is an integral part of building healthy and strong communities. With bushfires, floods and now a global pandemic, we are relying on our neighbours and communities now more than ever. The government has a critical role to play to ensure that everyone is being protected and helped in our community and that those in need are being cared for. Building resilient communities depends on building systems that are robust and put Australians first. This bill safeguards vulnerable people by empowering the Commissioner to act preemptively against those who are unsuitable for looking after 
vulnerable people due to prior misconduct. This bolsters the effectiveness of the NDIS provider register, which in turn helps inform effective decision making on the part of Australians. This bill is creating a better Australia, based on the principles of a fair go, justice and protecting those who are more susceptible to misconduct. Legislation of this kind has a negligible financial impact and it helps to create a better NDIS and a better Australia. There are many that seek a larger and more interventionist government because, in their view, government can solve all problems. The, the reality is that government is no replacement for robust communities or for families, especially in times of crisis. Rather than trying to prescribe what each individual requires, this government has always been about supporting the individual aspirations of Australians. The vision of the NDIS is, is to do exactly that. We do not seek to have a one-size-fits-all approach, especially given the complications that disabilities can result in. It is the individuals and their carers and representatives that know best, not a bureaucrat in Canberra with a big government agenda. We are returning the power of choice to the Australian people, the power to decide what a good life means for the individual and how best to go about achieving that. We are trusting in our fellow countrymen. For this to become a reality, the role of government is simple. Create and maintain effective systems which put hard-working Australians first. We can wax lyrical in this place, Deputy Speaker, about compassion and care. It is, hard, it is easy to say, it is harder to do. This bill does that, and for these reasons, I highly commend it to the House.